Let's talk his specialist subject, shall we? And Bournemouth. Right, let's get down to it. 11 days since the season ended, nine since that glorious parade. Right, what's it been like since then? It hasn't really stopped. Um, obviously, we, we've enjoyed the celebrations. Uh, had a little trip away to Vegas together. Everyone behaved and all back safe and sound. And, you know, it's just time to enjoy and, and reflect and look forward to what's, what's to come next season. Does that seem quite surreal? Yeah, I don't think it really sinks in until uh, the fixtures come out. Um, it's just crazy, you know, we've had such a good season. It's, it's such a hard, long season. You go on Saturday, Tuesday for so long and it takes a lot out of you uh, emotionally as well as physically. And it's, it's nice to be able to look back and, and see what we've done now. How much did it mean to be champions? It meant a lot. Um, I think, you know, for the bus parade, for example, you know, when you're you're going around and, and you've got that trophy to lift and, and enjoy together. Um, to be able to, to do that in front of you know your away followers that have been through through the journey with you the whole season is is, is something special and, and something that lived with us for, for a long time. When, when you first joined the club from Brighton, summer of 2012, Bournemouth had just finished 11th yeah. in League One. Three years later, there you go, you're doing that. What's been the key? I think uh, things changed when the gaffer come back. Um, obviously, when we was in League One, the, the club tried to bring in players that were established in the Championship, and for some reason, things weren't going right. Um, the previous manager, you know, left, and, and, and the gaffer come back, and just remember his first game and, and the atmosphere around the ground, the respect the lads that had worked under him already had for him, and from day one, you know, we've never really looked back. How good is he? He says he's going to buy British only over yeah. the summer. Well, there you go. Is, is that encouraging? Yeah, it is. Um, I think so much of what we've done has been built around hard work, um, a togetherness, uh, and that comes from a, a group of players that are, have been on a hard journey together. Um, some have taken knockbacks, um, all of a similar age, um, and realised where we want to go with our careers. And as I say, from day one when he came in, he, he installed that winning mentality into us. And, you know, we really haven't looked back. How important was that sort of mid-February time? February 10th to the 28th, mm. you went five games without a win. Yeah. Then you picked yourself up and went <coughs> unbeaten. Uh, how key was he there and how key was that morale you're talking about? Yeah, that, that's the strength of the manager. Um, they're the times when you need him most. Uh, he, he reinforced what we was about, got back to our core beliefs and, and worked hard. Um, you know, the lads had to pitch in, had some real tough games in that time, but we never lost faith in what we was about and, and what we could do. How do you go about, though, this is a million or perhaps 80 million pound question, how do you go about staying in the Premier League? What needs to be done? I just think everyone needs to improve. Um, we've done it from League One to Championship and, and got where we are now. You know, everything goes up in the Premier League, the physical side, um, the speed of the game, the strength of players. We just need to get better at what we're doing. Um, obviously, the, the gaffer's pretty cute with the players that he's brought in from when we made that jump previously. So, just get better and, and, and trust the manager and trust each other. OK, Tommy, right. Uh, I want you to have a look at these. Here we go. These are the official uh, Bournemouth pre-match pictures. Right, here we go. The team appears to have... Oh, ten men. No Tommy Elphick there. Mm, no Tommy Elphick there. Uh, ten men there again, and um, no Tommy Elphick in any of those. I, I tell you, there are 46 of these from this season alone. 46. Right, this is explained by this footage we have right here. Right, look at the top uh, right of your screen. There's the team photo taking place. Bottom of the screen, uh, there's Tommy. <coughs> right, you're going through your pre-match ritual. What are you doing, Tommy? I just think it's unbelievable how Bournemouth have been promoted with ten men. You know? <laughs> but, no, it's, it's just something that I picked up. First game I ever played uh, for Brighton, the, the goalkeeper had the wrong colour jersey on and there was a li little bit of a palaver and he was trying to get it changed and had a bit of mud on the bottom of my boots and went and banged them off against the post. And it's just stemmed from that, really. We won the game and thought I'd do it from, for every game since. Um, and then as we went along, a psychiatrist got involved with, with the club and and said, you know, that's quite a good time to be able to say a few words to yourself and, and get a little bit pumped up and remind yourself of the job that you have to do. And, and that's basically what it's about. 
Remember, this is a family show. <laughs> uh, we are very much inside the watershed here. Uh, what are you saying? Because you're not just muttering, you're almost shouting at that moment, aren't you? Can you repeat any of it? No, that, I think as well, you know, it gives me a chance to bond with the fans when you run towards them and, and they're singing your name and get them a little bit pumped up for the game as well. Um, but just, just really is reminding me myself of the job that I've got to do and what lies ahead. Um, now, there's also something involving chicken, potatoes, <laughs> vegetables. There's plenty of pre-match rituals in the Tommy Elphick household, isn't there? I think it starts on about a Wednesday before a Saturday game. Um, Mrs is having to cook me certain meals and a certain amount of potatoes and, and broccoli and always touching wood and checking door handles and whatnot. So I think it, it, when we spoke about it earlier, you know, it brings some sort of comfort to myself and, and gets me in a place where I'm able to perform at my best. So it's not something I'm going to stop.